Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks Wargaming and welcome to our latest video. Today marks a really sad day. This is the last video in the Road to 30k for Calth series that I started over two years ago now. So when I first started collecting my uh, Horus Heresy Ultramarines, I decided to do a little vlog for every single unit that was completed and then what would be painted up next. And that is how the series progressed. It was kind of like that unit was complete showcase with what was going to be built up next. And this army has grown and grown and grown and there's been 21 parts over the last two years of me adding and building to my ultramarines force and do you know what it has been absolutely amazing fun to paint up this army and then share it with you guys out there now at the end of part 21 i said there's only one video left to do and that was showcase the entire army on the battlefield absolutely everything out which is what we're going to do today we're going to go through every single miniature for my horus heresy ultramarines army but before i show you the miniatures i just want to say a massive thank you to everybody out there that's taken time out to watch these videos whether you're new to the series or you joined in part one and you followed it all the way through thank you very much for all of your comments all of your likes and all of your shares it's been amazing fun building this army alongside you guys out there um, so yes, I'm sure you don't want to listen to me rabbit on anymore. Let's go take a look at the Ultramarines. And here we go, this is it, the entirety of my 30k Ultramarines army. Everything out on the battle board for the very first time actually. I don't think I've ever actually had everything out. But let's dive into some of these troop selections. He might be a Lord of War, but there's only realistically one place to start this little video. And that is with Rebute Gulliman himself. Absolutely amazing miniature from Forge World. Um, I loved painting this guy up. He was daunting and scary and that marble effect absolutely intimidated me. But thanks to a video guide from Games Workshop, I managed to get it done and I was really happy with the results. I think the Rebute Gulliman miniature here is probably one of the best things I've ever actually painted up for the, uh, for the tabletop personally. Um, I love him. I think he's absolutely great and sits pride of place in my display cabinet. We're now going to shift on to the HQ choices for the Ultramarines. And we're going to start with Captain Ramos Van Thanos, a uh, named character for the Ultramarines that you can't buy a miniature for. So one of the things that I have done is I've taken one of the Praetor models and I think I, uh, I swapped the head over um, and made him blonde just to fit in with the Ultramarines. But absolutely fantastic. I love the way he's got his helm underneath his arm. And then obviously his sword. It looks like he's yelling out some battle orders across the battlefield there. Absolutely love him. And then we go into some of the other ones. So we have the Chaplain. Uh, this is from the Betrayal of Calf box set. Uh, standard plastic miniature, but he's got plasma pistol. And then he's got the power maul. Then we have the first of the Praetors there in the middle. He is again from the Battle of Calf box set. Um, chain fist and then the combi bolter and then we move into some of my special praetors so this is a praetor tribune that has got a two-handed paragon blade another miniature that i've absolutely loved painting up over my time i think it's absolutely fantastic and then one of the other hq choices we have for the ultramarines is my siege breaker so again a lovely forge world miniature with the hammer um, he's in tartarus terminator pattern armor if i remember rightly uh, and then he's got the Volkite Bolter, Combi Bolter going on there as well. Absolutely lovely miniature. Another miniature I love painting up. And then one HQ choice that you haven't realistically seen on the battlefield. And that is my Herald, my Bannered guy, who's uh, carrying the Ultramarines banner. Now this guy actually sits in my display cabinet next to Rebute Gulliman in, in the show of Mighty Blue of the 13th. But yes, he's, uh, he's painted up and you might not ever see him on the battlefield, but I just love the way that it works and the, and the transfers on the banner that was a, a mixture of transfers from the, the Ultramarine sheet from Forge World. Absolute pain trying to get those U's wrapped around the bottom, the Ultramarine's U's wrapped around the bottom of the, uh, of the billowing banner. But yes, it, really happy with the outcome. Now, next on the HQ choice, something slightly different, and I think it has been in a battle report, is my Damocles Command Rhino. So this Damocles Command Rhino is a really nice addition to this army because of the uh, orbital bombardments and all loads of other stuff that it allows me to do. But one of the things that I did do with this uh, with this one is I haven't glued this on here at the back. This actually comes off, and then I have uh, some ultra, uh, some Rhino doors that go on over the top. So this can double up as a Rhino or my Damocles 
command tank. So there was a couple of options for me. You guys out there probably seen it more as a rhino running in battle reports, but the options are there for my Damocles if it needs to come out. So let's head into troops. So first of the troop choices, we have a 10 man tactical squad all equipped with bolters. There is a Nuncio Vox in here as well. The Sergeant has a power sword and is in Arta Ficer armor. I always take Arta Ficer armor when selecting my sergeants for the tactical squad. It just gives me a better survivability and can take some shots on him. I try and keep the squad alive a little bit more. It's exactly the same loadout for the second squad. Third squad is exactly the same, minus the Nuncio Voxes. So I have two Nuncio Voxes to help out with some heavy support choices that need those line of sights, but this third squad doesn't have it. And then final troop choice. I have my breacher squad. Now my breacher squads have all been done with red helms. So if you're reading the Horace Harris novels, listening to any of their audio books, you will know that red helms are not on sergeants at this point. They are a mark of dishonor in the Ultramarines Legion. And then there is an incident that happens in one of the audio books that basically means that the red helm is not really seen as a dishonor anymore. It's more a badge of honor. And one guy goes off and puts a squad together that is comprised of everybody with red helms who are just basically trying to redo their name, make good on their promises that they made when they joined the Ultramarines. So I've done an entire squad of red helms there. So let's move over to elites. So the first of the elite choices is some Cataphracty Terminators, all equipped with chain fists and storm bolters, really good staple in the heresy games. Um, I love the fact that they look slightly different to the Terminators that we've been used to in the past. I absolutely love the helmets on these guys. Um, and elite sergeants have white helms, hence the reason why these, the sergeant here has his white helm on. Uh, next, in the elites, we have an apothecary. Always nice to have that feel no pain option. Always quite scary and daunting painting up white. Um, my ultramarines are quite clean for how I normally paint, so doing white and trying to get it a little bit clean, but mid dirty I would say was quite daunting next is two contempt to dreadnoughts so one on the right has two carrier's assault cannons and the one on the left which is from the trial of calf box set has the melter and the power fist now the one on the right when I first did this guy I asked Robin very very nicely if he would magnetize one of the arms so this arm actually pops off and I have the painted up power fist so this guy here can actually double up as the Honoured Telemectaris, which is a HQ choice for the Ultramarines in Heresy. So I can run him as either dual wielding carrier's assault cannons, or I can run him as Honoured Telemectaris. And then the final elite choices are the quad mortars for my Ultramarines, three of them, all with their spotters. Absolutely love doing these and painting these guys up. Now, because I do take a siege breaker, I can run Phosphex if I want to, which I know is always a little bit naughty in Heresy to run Phosphex. And a lot of people out there have said, well, Rebute Gulliman wouldn't run them. He wouldn't run Phosphex because it's just too nasty a weapon. Do you know what? I think he's such a tacticianer that he probably would look at the battlefield and decide whether or not to take Phosphex before a battle. And so would any of the Ultramarines HQ choices to be quite honest they they you know master tacticians they they stick to the the codexes and the doctrine that they've been taught by Rebute and if the field of battle determines that it needs Phosphex they would take Phosphex let's move over to fast attack only two units in this we have got some jet bike sky hunter squadrons in here there's two heavy bolters and there is a volkite discharger as well now I really love these models but they don't ever perform very well on the battlefield for me they always they always die basically and uh, to be honest i've always struggled with them i've tried to outflank with them and do all that kind of wonderful gubbins doesn't ever seem to work for me so maybe in the next heresy game heresy game that i play i'll get them back out and see how i can do and then cover from the air we have the xiphon interceptor which is an absolutely fantastic model um i love it with the last cannons and then you've got the xiphon rotary missile launcher in underneath as well absolutely amazing bit of kit Got one rhino here at the moment, so obviously the Damocles can turn into a rhino, so I can run two if I want to, which is what I normally do, and then the tactical squads can jump into them. First of the heavy support choices, I've got a Scorpius Whirlwind. Now, I absolutely adore this model. I love the fact that it can shoot what it can't see, but then obviously you scatter, um, you take your full scatter, unless you've got a Nuncio Vox that can see the target, 
That's the reason why I've got two of them, one in each squad, so that it, they can help give line of sight to this guy, even if he's buried behind or underneath the building. It's absolutely fantastic. I, I love it. I love the slightly changes on the standard pattern Rhino. I love the, the front window and, and then the rocket launchers on the back are absolutely amazing. Um, Spartan assault tank, las cannons, heavy bolters, flare shield, armored ceramite. The works with this guy. I always give it the works. You never, you never ever take one of these without a flare shield. Uh, a certain person who's been on the channel sometimes runs or, or sometimes ran his without, and he just kept getting destroyed. So always take a flare shield. Absolutely fantastic bit of kit to uh, to weaken the strength of a weapon by one. So a last cannon becomes strength eight. So it's glancing on sixes against a Spartan in its front arc of fire. Why wouldn't you take one of them? And then final heavy support choice, I've got my Contempt of Dreadnought. We have the Gravflux Bombard, we have the Siege Jewel, and we have the Phosphex Discharger on the top of the body. Now, one of the things that I didn't do a video for was my uh, Dreadnought Drop Pod. I didn't see the point in doing a video for a Dreadnought Drop Pod, to be quite honest, and just added it into my army. Um, but absolutely beautiful. It looks fantastic, and it looks great in blue. And also, why wouldn't you stick your, you know, your Leviathan in that and drop him in down into enemy lines and absolutely destroy face? Let's head over to the Lords of War. So the first of the Lords of War is the Glaive. Lots of las cannons. And then obviously you've got the glaive beam weapon as well. Absolutely horrendous on the battlefield, that weapon. It does a lot of damage. Um, really enjoyed painting this, this miniature up. It was quite daunting. It's quite a big chunk of resin. And uh, yeah, found it quite scary, but really happy with the end results. I, I loved loved doing that. And uh, it's, seen, it's seen battle a few times and has always performed very well, including tournaments at Warhammer World where I very unfortunately tabled an, an Iron Warriors guy on turn two, mainly down to the glaive, destroying a lot of the vehicles in one or two shots, just horrendous. So if you're watching, I apologize for that game, but yeah, the glaive is absolutely amazing. And next we have two House Von Her Knights. House Von Her, loyal to the Ultramarines, would go off and fight for other legions, but always come back to the 13th. And the first one is the Knight Paladin with its battle cannon and its uh, chainsword working its way up the battlefield. Um, and obviously it's got the missile launchers on the top as well. Absolutely fantastic. Now I didn't paint these up, they were painted up by a good friend of ours, Keith. And both of these are actually painted up by Keith. They did an amazing job on them. I still really need to sit down and add transfers onto them, which I will do at some point just to finish them off. But yes, these guys have seen have seen battle in the 30k and the 40k battle reports on the channel, and I love them. I think they're absolutely amazing, the pair of them. And then obviously the next one is a warden with the Gatler cannon and then the chainsword as well, and then the Icarus um, cannons on the top. But House Vaughn Her, absolutely amazing addition to the Ultramarines. I'm so glad I could pick a, a night house that was loyal to the 13th and would make sense them sitting in there. But then we do have one more Lord of War. And the last Lord of War, of course, is my Reaver Battle Titan, done up in the colours of Legio Progress, Progress, Progressius, Progressius. I always get it wrong. I'm always going to get the name of that wrong. Um, but yes, another Legio loyal to the Ultramarines would always fight at the side of the 13th and took quite a heavy beating at Kalf. Um, just before Kalf, they actually lost all of their uh, Warlord Titans. So it was only Reavers and Warhounds at Kalf, and most of them were destroyed. So it's nice to have a very rare Legio Reaver Titan with my 13th Legion. So that is my Lords of War. That is my Fast Attack and my Elites. Then we come down into the troops over here with the Rhino Transport. Then we get into heavy support and then down into HQ and then finally Rebute Gulliman. So once again a massive thank you to everybody out there that's taken time out to watch the videos, has watched my Ultramarines grow and evolve over time and take to the battlefield. So yes, thanks for watching guys. Please leave a comment what you think to my Ultramarines now they're all out onto the battlefield in one big parade I suppose is probably the best word. Um, please like, share and subscribe. It does really help out the channel. Don't forget to click the little bell icon so you never miss any of our content. And as always, we will see you on the next one.